Good, and the Secretary of State did announce yesterday that they're hoping to get rid of bubbles for September, although we'll have to wait and see if that comes to fruition. But there will be uh, lockers available for students uh, in Year 7. It takes a few uh, days and sometimes a couple of weeks to sort all of that out, uh, but they are definitely available for everybody. OK, so our next question, will children have the same form tutors throughout the school year? Uh, I'll take okay. this one. Uh, yes, in, in the short answer. The... The plan and the intention is always for the pastoral team to be a consistent thing for, for your students. Um, so heads a year, assistant head a year should stay the same for the five years as should form tutors. Um, that can change. Um, I think it's um, an, an evolving thing. So your, your child may end up with a, a different form tutor. That could be uh, for a whole host of different reasons, but the intention is that they will stay the same for the five years and be that um, consistent uh, face for them and their first port of call in the mornings uh, and any point during the day. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think Mr. Michelle, is going to pick up the next yeah. question? <clears throat> uh, question, uh, are there spaces for students to go for extra support if they are anxious or worried? Uh, thank you for that one, Niall. Definitely. Uh, we're very proud of our pastoral support at, at Streetly. Um, we've got various different areas where people can go as Mr Allen just alluded to the first point of call will always be the form tutor you've then got the two gentlemen on my left hand side as the year team but then from that point if extra support is needed then through the safeguarding team and through what we call respite there's a room where you can go where there's very few students there's trained staff in there that can talk through any anxieties any worries that you have um, and also um, schools by 2025, all schools have got to have a, a designated mental health lead within their school. And we don't want to wait till 2025. So we've actually got our designated mental health lead within the school now. And we've also got uh, over 20 staff that are trained to deal with mental health, various different aspects of it. So whatever the worry, whatever the concern, whatever the issue, whatever the, might be going on in your son or daughter's life outside of Streetly as well, We'll always have that wraparound support to help them make sure that they have a good experience here at Streetly. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, the next question, uh, love the live tour, fab job. Uh, my child feels more relaxed, especially being able to put a face uh, to name for his form tutor. Question, uh, when he starts in year seven, especially as you said, big transition, uh, will he be provided with a buddy? And due to COVID rules in primary, my child had classroom bubbles. Uh, will it be the same? And if so, will that hinder him being able to make friends as new school? Uh, none of his friends from primary will be attending Streetly, so a big change. And that's from Sobe. Uh, I don't know if anybody's lined up to take that one. I'm quite happy to take that. Uh, yeah, so we, we, we are still waiting government uh, um, uh, guidance on what's happening in September. Uh, the, the, the issue there is, of course, at the moment, um, and we have found from Year 7 this week, actually, that it's probably the right measures to take, which is, at the moment, if we have a uh, positive COVID case in a teaching bubble, that we would then isolate the whole of the teaching, uh, or, or of the teaching group, as the classes are currently organised um, and set it. Um, and they are a uniform group that have their five lessons together a day, uh, whether that's maths, English or whatever it may be. Um, the, the reason for that is obviously you then minimise the number of isolations when uh, if you get a positive case. And we've certainly found out this week, having had a few positive cases, uh, that uh, the transmission of particularly the new Delta variant uh, has been significant for us. And one case in year seven in the space of a day became 10 cases in year seven pretty much covering the entire year group in terms of those needing to isolate. So um, whether that will still be an issue in September, we don't know. Uh, whether we will still be in bubbles, we don't know. What would likely to be happen if they, when they first came would be there, they would be in their form groups. Um, and then we would then gather information through assessments and data to look at whether we would move them into ability sets. Um, now that, uh, as I say, is something that we are, we cannot be certain about at the moment, whether we move to different groups for different subjects or not. Um, but it is something that's absolutely on our radar and I'm very proud of the way in which we've, we've addressed the, the COVID measures. Um, uh, one of the things that I can reassure you of is that what we don't want is any child coming into school and feeling alone. 
Um, we have lots of mechanisms for doing that, you know, through our entire pastoral matrix, and we have more than the people that Mr. Harris has already spoken about this evening. But we will keep an eye on any student where we feel they're not settling. Uh, we will engage with, with parents to make sure that their child is, is settling in, and we have a settling in parents' evening, which happens very soon in the first term. And, uh, and, and we will make sure that we can do everything we can to help a young person settle into secondary school. Uh, the thing about coming from uh, a uh, primary uh, where there aren't other students come in, um, and we do have a number of students where that's the case, is I would say don't worry about that. Very quickly you will make new friends. In fact, my, my own daughter's in year seven and she said to me this morning, oh, I'm walking to school with my new friend who started the school on Monday. Uh, wherever you go, there will always be kind people uh, who will look after you and, and I think uh, you can be reassured by that that we will try and make sure that everybody settles in and makes friends um, and if we are struggling at any point we will help you with that and that, that's just the way we, we sort of roll here at Streetly we do put pastoral care at the forefront of everything we make sure we look after children because happy kids make more progress um, so don't be too concerned about that whether we're in bubbles or not uh, we will have your child's uh, well-being at our forefront and there's lots of other ways as well even just going on the walk and these guys will affirm that the, the twice weekly walk that we do is a great opportunity for young people just to chat um, and we find it does wonders for their for their well-being you know phones are away they're just talking um, and that's something where a lot of young people get that opportunity to forge new friendships uh, and of course that's going to be continuing because it sits at the forefront of our, our, our work towards their, their, both their physical and their mental well-being. Uh, okay, our next question is, do Year 7 have a space that they can go to at break and lunchtime? Um, I'll have to say that. Um, so yes, Year 7 will have a space to go to, a social space to go to. Currently due to COVID restrictions, um, everybody's outside and they've got their own area, a bit of security to be with their friends and not have any other years sort of around them. Um, there is other places as well um, in the school. So for example, down on one of the fields, we have uh, certain days where year seven can go and play football. Um, me and Mr. Allen will also be in our social space. If you ever need to come and see us, um, you'll be able to come in and speak to us about anything or just come and say hello. Um, but yes, there is at break and lunchtime, you'll have a space to go to. Um, with all your year group. I think on the back of that one as well, kind of backs onto that, that uh, social time as well is a great opportunity to mix within the year group bubble as well. Um, and through the kind of organised activities that Sir was just talking about, you, there's an opportunity there to, to start branching out and meet, meeting new people within the year group. But, uh, I mean, there are lots of activities that run at lunch times just for year seven students. Um, we quite often have a posse that go off to, uh, trampolining is popular. Uh, uh, football is always popular but there are lots of opportunities we have some kids go off on the basketball courts uh, we have students that do indoor activities uh, table tennis is another popular one that we run at lunch times uh, I'm quite adamant that we stick to our um, lunch not being so I know some schools have moved to 30 minutes um, one of the reasons I really want to resist pressure to reduce that time is that actually there is a lot of fantastic activity where young people can, can keep healthy, can move around, can run around, play sport, uh, uh, to go to clubs, uh, some go to art, some go to performing arts. Um, one of the reasons I want to keep that time long enough is that they can grab something to eat, but then they can get off to those clubs. And that is another opportunity, going back to the previous question, where they can make new friends. Uh, okay, uh, next question. We've tried to register for free school meals but can't access the system. Uh, when will this be sorted? Uh, from Mr. Akhtar. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take that. I'm glad this question's come up actually because we've had a few people phoning um, regarding free school meals. Um, you will not be able to access the free school meal system until your son or daughter has left primary school. Uh, for the simple reason being, if that happens, it will duplicate your son and daughter. Um, so just please bear with it. As soon as your son or daughter has left primary school, you should be able to go onto the system at that point then, and you can register for your free school meals at that point. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, what time do children have to be in on the first day? Uh, right, again, we're waiting for government guidance here. Um, that sounds bizarre because you'd think we'd just know what the first day would be. So school starts at 8.45, and in normal circumstances on the Monday, and I can't remember the exact date for our first day in, but... Uh, 
the sixth, I think. Uh, the staff are in on the uh, the Thursday and Friday the week before for our training and staff development. Um, so on that day when they come in, they will be starting at eight forty five. But uh, and this is the big but. So we've had guidance from the government this week that is telling us that we will be mass testing students for COVID before we return to full schooling in September. And we have been given the opportunity that if we wish to, we may bring students into school before they are due to start at the school. Now, I'm currently looking at a plan for that because my actual view is I probably prefer them to just test in the morning when they come in. But I'm a little bit worried about year seven because I can see our, our other students are absolutely fine with that because they've been used to a regime of, of testing and they went through the whole testing process that we did when we mass tested back in, in March. I'm just a little bit worried. I don't want year sevens to come in and feel anxious about, about being tested. So I, I think we'll judge that one on our first couple of days about how we do that and we'll, we'll come up with a plan. Uh, if we are going to test and if it is a recommendation that we shouldn't start with year seven uh, from the government before we've tested as many as possible, because of course it's not uh, mandatory, it is consensual. Parents have to consent to students having a test. We do strongly recommend it and, and our, our experience from outbreaks in the school shows that testing really does help us to keep a lid on outbreaks. But um, at the same time, we'll do what we can to make sure that we don't add a little bit of anxiety to something that young people are anxious about anyway. Um, if we do, we'll preempt that with videos, uh, with um, uh, films to not worry about it. We'll prepare those in the summer and then we'll get them out to all year six students so that they can have a look at those and maybe just get rid of a little bit of that anxiety. Back to the question, when are they starting? That may change slightly. The first full day of school will be the sixth at 8.45, but it could be possible that we test students before they start their school day on that day or possibly a few days beforehand on the Thursday or the Friday. Um, we are still looking at that and we'll probably stay looking at that, mainly because the government haven't given us the guidance yet and they haven't told us exactly how it's going to work. Well, there's no surprise there because it's been like that all year. But we will, as soon as we have that guidance, respond to it as soon as we can. Okay, uh, next question. If PE kit doesn't arrive on time or fit them, will children get in trouble for it? I'll put that one. Okay, Mr. Yeah, so as you're aware, we're moving our PE kit to a completely new uh, night kit that you can order from the Lisport website, as I'm aware many of you have started to do already, which is fantastic. Uh, the new kit is uh, all black, so it's black t-shirt, black shorts, black socks, with some optional extras. Uh, now, for whatever reason, if the kit doesn't arrive on time, or you aren't able to get that, that specific kit, if you are able to purchase just a plain black t-shirt or polo, plain shorts that are black and plain black socks, that is absolutely fine, okay? It's been uh, cleared with the PD department, there won't be an issue as long as the t-shirt, shorts and socks are all just plain black. So if for whatever reason the kit's running late or you're unable to get it on time or for whatever reason, as long as it's plain black, there's not there won't be a problem whatsoever from the PD department. Um. I'm going to slightly override that a little bit. Um, so I am concerned that people will, will feel that they've got to buy two lots of kit there. So you might have to buy a black t-shirt and black shorts because you haven't got the, the school PE kit. If you've got that, that would be great. I think in most instances, everybody should be fine and there'll be very, very few people that will have this issue. But if you can evidence that there's an order and we will work with List Sports, we'll know if there's a shortage and if, if uh, there's been any issue getting the stuff out. I would say get your orders in now and you'll be absolutely fine because you'll be ready for... The deadline is the 5th of July. It's on, right. on the List Sport website. So if you get that order in now, then in the next few days, then you should be absolutely fine for September um, as long as we know that that's been done, we, you know, we will give a little bit of leeway on that because you know, I, I do realise that at the start of, of secondary school, there is a, a large outlay of, of, for, for new equipment. Um, I know that some people will be purchasing Chromebooks uh, and, and there are a lot, there's, a lot, there's a lot you have to buy in school uniform. And so we will look at that one. Um, uh, if someone turns up and they don't have that kit, I wouldn't expect parents to have to go out and buy black kit if they don't have it. Um, I think we have to be reasonable there. But I really would say if we can't get that sorted within the first few days, then that would become a problem for us. Uh, but we would talk to you about that rather than just starting to take punitive uh, uh, reactions to it. Uh, for most students, it's sorted and, and, and it should be fine. We've moved to List Sport and we've changed the kit. One, because the kids like it more. Uh, two, it's also cheaper than anything that we've had previously from our current suppliers, um, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to move. 
Okay, uh, next question. Is there going to be a year seven residential? And if so, when? Who's picking that? I, I think so. Should, should yeah. I have it? Go yeah. Uh, there will be a residential, hopefully, COVID restrictions allowing. Um, we have changed it slightly. We're not going to do it at the start of the year in October time. We are going to move it back further into year seven towards May. Um, and it's gonna have a slightly different emphasis on it. So instead of it being a bonding kind of activity that's happening, we're gonna use it more as a resilience camp. So students will know each other, we'll throw various different activities and challenges at your sons and daughters. Um, it's an amazing week. I'm very privileged that I get to go every year just for a day um, and spend some time doing all of the activities alongside your children. Um, but it will have a slightly different emphasis on it. And hopefully what that time will also give us as well is for the COVID restrictions to ease even more uh, so we can do more of the activities that are on offer there. Um, another reason for moving it back is um, is that initial cost at the start of the year. So yeah, Chromebook, school uniform, PE kit, equipment, all the things that you want to buy. And then, then we throw on top of that the, the, the residential. Um, so one of the reasons why we have moved it back to May is it does give parents that opportunity to be able to pay for it over a longer period of time without all of that heavy high cost coming through uh, right at the beginning. Okay, um, so is that the last question? Uh, yeah, oh, just a reminder. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Pike. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, uh, we've got some still coming in. So there's the email address for anybody who's watching in. Questions at the Strictly Academy. Co. Uk. Okay, and our next question is, at the beginning of the first day, will tutors or staff be outside to guide pupil where to go? We could all answer that one. Who wants it? Go on, I'll, I'll go on sir. Uh, yes, <laughs> in short. So don't, don't worry about that. We, we will make sure that they're not just their form tutors that they have, uh, are going to have met by now because of the videos. Um, we'll be out there. Form tutors will be out there. There will be staff that they know from summer school as well. Um, so there's going to be lots of friendly faces and lots of familiar faces um, on that first day and we will all be out there um, guiding people, showing them where they need to be. Um, it's all all taken care of and no no student is going to be left wondering kind of where to go or anything like that. And fingers crossed by that point they will have had an introduction to a lot of different teachers, uh, especially if they're coming to summer school. So uh, lots of friendly and familiar faces for them. Can I just add? To that as well please so um, if your your son or daughter has SEN requirements or is very anxious the team will be there as well so the SEN team will be out at the front gates at the Queslip Rail gates just to meet you as the, as the students come in just so they've got that person straight away that they can go to and, and be looked after straight away, if they are concerned about anything vast vast majority are just excited to come and start that just throws up actually a question for me will it be front gate and back gate at that point Yes. 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 Uh, yes. We, we, we normally bring in the Queslip Road for year six first. Yeah, actually, first. So for the first yeah, day. Actually, sorry, so day right. one is Queslip Road entrance. Day two is both entrances are open. I think the reason for that is for that meet and greet, um, uh, and also the difficulty of trying to staff that and meet the right people at both ends of the school on that first day. Uh, the next question, and I'm going to take this one. I don't know if anybody else is, because it's something I'm passionate about. Uh, uh, does the drama department do productions? Uh, oh, yes, they do. Uh, I, we absolutely love our school productions, um, and we have a collaboration between the three performing arts departments, so music, dance, and drama. Uh, uh, sadly, um, with intentions of doing a, a show in this year, we've obviously not had that opportunity because of COVID. We weren't allowed to mix kids over, over different year groups. Uh, and of course, we would never have been able to have an audience. Um, it is our absolute intention as we go forward. And very interestingly, our last show, uh, which was Beauty and the Beast, I think, um, had a huge number of year seven students taking part. And in fact, they made up most of the cast and in fact took some of the lead roles in the performance. Uh, it was a full musical with a dance extravaganza, with stage work, it was amazing. Uh, it's something I'm hugely passionate about, as I am about all the performing arts. Um, you won't see our curriculum narrowed in this school. If young people are passionate about dance, they can follow dance from the first time they're here in year seven, all the way through to the sixth form. And that is also true of drama, of music, of art, of subjects that are being pushed to the side in, 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 in many uh, circumstances because of the prevalence of the EBAC. 
Um, it is something I'm passionate about, and certainly whilst we're on my watch, we'll keep those performing arts um, uh, available to young people, along with all the other things that we do with the technologies and our, our IT and computer science and science and maths and English. But those things are also protected, and, uh, and they're hugely important to us. Um, and one of our most popular clubs, actually, is, is dance. Uh, and then battling for that is also the music and the drama department with their drama clubs and after school and, and extracurricular music. So, uh, yeah, we, I'm sure there'll be lots of opportunities for a young person that wants to do that. OK, uh, next question from Lisa. Uh, can you please advise when and where we need to return the completed forms from the welcome pack? I'll take that one. Oh, I'm glad you will, because I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so over the last uh, couple of weeks, you'll obviously receive lots of different documents and many need returning from summer school reply slips uh, to the induction morning reply slips and that sort of stuff. Um, for the packs, if you are attending summer school or your child attending summer school, you can bring them with you on the days that you attend summer school and someone will collect them off your reception, that's absolutely fine. Or bring them with you on the first day, okay? There's no worry or no rush to try and get them in beforehand. So either on the first day uh, in September or over the summer if you are attending summer school at any point. So don't, don't worry about it pretty much. Okay, thank you Mr Sanders. Uh, uh, our next question from Sonia. Uh, do you as a school receive an overview of our children's <coughs> academic levels from their current primary schools? Um, I think Mr Harris can pick that one up. Yep, I can have that. Um, yes is the answer to that, but far more than just the, uh, the academic overview. We take an overview of your child holistically so we will find out about any safeguarding, any SEN requirements, any simple things like dietary requirements. And that all goes into what we call our Streetly Bible, um, which we are constantly updating. I know Mr. Sanders has been on a, a, a Google meeting recently, last couple of days, with one of the primary schools, just so we can gauge more information uh, through there. We do also try and take all types of information about who is best to be placed with and who is not best to be placed with each other. Please just bear with us with all of this information, especially when it comes to form groups and things. We have 270 students to place. We place them where we can and the best that we possibly can. But then also we do review that in September. So at this current time, please just, your form that you're in, you are in that form uh, and, and just please allow it to come into September settle in and then we will rev review that at some point so yes we get all of the academic data but we also get far more than that so we can make sure that we set everybody up to start on, a ro on the best footing okay thank you mr harris uh, our next question is from his core uh, how can i prepare my child for secondary school are there any things i should be doing over the summer um i'd, I'd probably say three things um one come to summer school uh, I think that ha is an opportunity to um, just take a little bit of the anxiety out, familiarisation with the building, with movement around the school, a sense of the size of it, um, uh, meet some staff, meet, make some friends, um, you know, and there will be people around if there were any issues during that, there'll be staff and senior staff available to support with that. Um, so, uh, you know, a absolutely, I'd say, number one, that's something that I would, I would, I would uh, um, promote. Um, uh, the second one is, is something that I would say to any uh, student in any circumstance in any year group, and, and my 17-year-old daughter, who's in year 12 now, um, uh, has, this, um, has been brilliant with this all of, her, all of her life, which is she reads every single day. And, and, and if there's any of the, the, the young people out there like, oh, I don't really like reading, if there is one thing that we all know that makes the biggest difference to how well you cope with any of your subjects, it's reading. And that sounds crazy. Well, how does it help me with maths and how does it help me with physics? Absolutely the most important thing that can help you is to read. And, and finding something that you're really passionate about. And even if that's magazines, we would prefer you to read fiction and, and also you know, things like, like autobiographies and... Um, Particularly an issue with our, our young men uh, who tend to prefer to do something active or, or, and I'm not stereotyping there because I know there are uh, uh, young women as well who are, are you know, less 
attuned to wanting to read, but I would absolutely, if somebody said to me, what's the one tip you would give for success in secondary school? It is to keep reading and find, you know, and it's something that's right at the forefront of our strategy for improvement within the school is to get more young people reading. Uh, and then the final one is, if you, if you wanted any advice, is just to, to, to just keep saying it's going to be okay. Show them the videos, keep familiarising them, get them to the summer school, but just, just be sure and confident that they will be fine. When we survey our students, the number one question we ask is, are you happy in school? And we get 99 or 100% strike rate on that question in this school, which is, yes, I am happy in school. The other one we go so high on is, do you feel safe in school? And I, I just, you know, why would, why, would we, why, why would we get that from our students if that wasn't happening? And of course, sometimes, you know, things may go wrong, but you can be confident that there'll be somebody there to try and help you sort that out. We don't get everything right, but my God, we try to. Um, and so just that third thing I'd say is just remove any anxiety. Just say, don't, don't worry, you will make friends. If they're worried about making friends, we will help with that. Uh, you will find yourself in school and, uh, and, just, and if you've not done brilliantly in primary, it's a chance to reinvent yourself and to restart on things. Uh, so I, all I would say is come to summer school, read, that's a massive one for me, and also just don't worry. The next question I'm going to answer really quickly, which is difficult for me, uh, is summer school still happening? I think I've made that one pretty clear, uh, Helen, yes, uh, summer school is still happening. So yeah, actually, yeah. it's probably worth Mr. Sanders just filling in any extra information. Yeah. On that. So, um, understandably, some people have asked, have asked that question because we have to cancel the um, transition days, which it should have been today. But at the minute, there's no. We're not worried at all that we're going to have to cancel uh, the summer school. The main uh, stopping point with the transition day was the potential mixing with new students, then going back into their primary schools uh, tomorrow. But with the summer school. Uh, when they do come in, they'll be put into their groups, and at the minute we've not decided what they are, and I know people have already asked. They hopefully will be with some new students who they'll be informed with from September, and some people that they already know anyway to make it a little bit easier. Um, and then that will almost become their, their new bubble, uh, if that makes sense. So they, they, there won't be any more additional mixing, so they'll be safer than what they are at school at the minute because bubbles will be smaller and we'll still do everything that we do anyway um, to, to limit the risk. So summer school at the minute, yeah, it will be happening and we will still be following uh, COVID guidance to make sure that, that your child is safe when they do attend the, the summer school as well. Uh, if anybody's got any um, further questions about enrolment onto the summer school, if you haven't yet or you haven't expressed uh, um, uh, an interest in it, do contact us and ask for Mr Sanders um, uh, and he can email out to you. If you leave details with the reception, uh, he can email the information about what's going on and how it's being staffed and all the, all, all the things that we, we know about it. Um, I think you sort of answered that question just um, during the summer school, will the children be placed with children from their new form class? I think, well, pretty, we're going to try, because the uptake has been so good, we're currently on about 80% uh, of students joining us in September attending the summer school at some point over one of the two weeks. When we group them, we will try to put them with a few other students that <coughs> will be in their form because... We still want the transition uh, summer school to support that transition and, and get them to meet new people and start to make friends and, and ease those worries. And at the same time, we do want we hopefully want to put them with some familiar faces that they already do know. So there will be a little bit of a mix there uh, for students joining us. Can I just add as well that there are still places available. I know some parents have emailed me asking uh, if their child got a space, if we've got the return slips on time. There's, there's not really a time limit, okay? we, obviously we want them in as soon as possible to plan um, and we have kept places open for every student uh, across the two weeks. So there are places for everyone, uh, just if you can get the reply slips back as soon as possible that would be great. Okay, thank you Mr Sanders. Um, what happens if your children don't want to go on the residential trip? Uh, is anybody ready to take one? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. I think every year, or certainly every year since I've been here and I've been doing residentials, that there, there will always be children that don't want to do the residential trip uh, for a, a whole host of different reasons. Um, I hope by doing it in May, it, sl it might slightly change that, that they're going to be more comfortable with the people in the year group because obviously when you're doing it in October, there's lots of new faces and there'll be people that they still haven't spoken to. So fingers crossed, when it comes to May, we might have 
uh, less children not wanting to go, but there will still be cases of children saying, no, I just don't want to, for, like I say, for a variety of different reasons. Um, traditionally, they go in two halves. Uh, so there'll be the north and south uh, strand there in teaching. So the week is split uh, over the two strands. So if your child uh, is the first half of the week, for example, and they don't want to go, they will be uh, with the other half um, of the year group still in school and they'll have their teaching uh, sessions uh, with, that, with that half of the year group. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's right, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, okay, um, I think I've sort of answered this question from Lisa already. Um, will children need to be COVID tested for the for the summer? Oh no, actually, it's a different slant. Uh, will they need to be tested for summer school? No. Um, uh, so the government guidance that came out this week, uh, or or the, the the statement of intent that we've had from the Department of Education this week, uh, states that Year Six students will not need to be uh, COVID tested because um, uh, they currently are, are not um, and that they won't need to be COVID tested for summer school. Um, so uh, that isn't something that we will be doing um, to uh, give access to summer school. Um, Can I just add on yeah. there, sorry. Um, something, and I'm not, not sure if Mr Downey knows of this yet, it's that, that rule. Uh, I've spoken to Mr Marston, who looks after obviously our testing, and what we may offer, depending on what the guidance, uh, how it goes, is the opportunity during summer school to do a test, just as Mr. Dan said earlier, to get used to the process of um, of doing the tests and going through it all, because that, that's a worry in itself. But that is something that may become an option, but that it won't be expected as. Mr. Yeah, I mean, everything, no child would be tested without consent, um, uh, you know, just to, to be clear on that. So if there is to be any testing, and that won't be in the first week, uh, I would imagine. Um, uh, I, I think that's something that would need to be checked, and I'm, I'm not fully aware of that at the moment. But, uh, um, but no child would be tested, as is any child who is here now, uh, would be tested without consent from their parents. Um, the way in which we do that is we would uh, send out to the uh, parents, or we would actually do it when they arrived, is to receive consent. Um, but, uh, but as I say, that's something that you wouldn't need to worry about if it's something that you didn't want to do. Um, okay, how much homework can pupils expect to receive in the first few weeks? If anybody's got more on second? Yep. Yeah. Um, in the first few weeks, obviously, there won't be a complete bombardment, and I know it's something that will build up. Um, in my department in RE, we might give them a couple of tasks just a research task to find out about a certain figure um, with any religion. I know in the languages department they get them to cover their books and things like that as well. So it won't be bombardment, uh, bombardment of homework straight away. I also know obviously with the rollout of the Chromebooks as well at some point um, they'll build a task to, towards there as well um, and I know there can be some homework that will be uh, to do with the Chromebooks but there won't be a massive bombardment straight away. There might be little tasks that, that um, each subject might ask them to do um, leading to their subject. Okay, thank you, Mr. McCourt. Um, the, the next question, in what year group might pupils typically be able to participate in comp competitive sports versus other schools? Uh, what sports do streetly participate in competitively? Um, it's, it's an interesting question because in the last 12 months, uh, it's been decimated. Um, we have, in fact, tried to reintroduce um, sporting opportunities to uh, both primary schools and to our students in secondary, year seven all the way through to uh, uh, year 13. Um, uh, it has been really, really challenging. Uh, in normal circumstances, uh, we would be involved in competitive opportunities from year seven um, in a number of sports. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Sanders wants to, because yeah. you, you lead on, on the sports partnership. Yeah, yeah so we have actually um, returned to some form of face-to-face -face for uh, both primary and secondary, as Mr. Downey stated, and the the return for the secondary was year seven and eight football, um, with it, which went ahead and was really successful with with local schools, boys uh, and girls. Yeah, boys boys and girls nights, uh, and that's something that from uh, from my point of view as school games organizer uh, in the local area will definitely carry on in the new year and is in the plan for next year's competition calendar is to build on that for for secondary schools. So lots of opportunities for. Uh, especially Year 7 students because we understand that they've missed out on the opportunity uh, or, or a few opportunities rather to, to represent their primary schools which is obviously a shame so we do want to build in a lot of opportunities for them to start to represent their secondary schools as, as early on as o October uh, as Covid allows but there are there will be um, opportunities from, from as early as Year 7. 
Uh, in terms of sports that we do, and those are um, there's, there's sort of different levels of that because we have um, competition within school uh, um, that uh, we encourage students to take part in, and we have a number of sports that are covered. You know, we talked already about trampolining, table tennis, and so on. Um, so we have those sports that have regular fixtures. Um, the biggest problem is getting fixtures and finding schools who will put um, teams out. And quite often we're very disappointed because we can't. Our opposition doesn't turn up. Or uh, um, now. There are certain sports that there are there is greater regularity. We would like there to be more regularity with it. So football, netball being probably the two most popular. Um, but that said, through the school games network, so the level two school games, uh, um, it runs for a number of sports. You know, from triathlon uh, through to badminton, uh, table tennis. Uh, Volleyball, swimming galas, swimming well. galas um, and so we engage with that uh, as much as we possibly can. I think one of the things that we're always proud of is we put teams into everything, um, uh, and we have been in the top three schools, secondary schools in the entire black country, um, including all primary and secondary schools, for the years that the school games have been running, probably since about 2015. Uh, we last won it in 2017. I am desperate to win it again, not that I'm competitive. Uh, but one of the ways of winning it is to, to enter as many sports as possible. One of the things that we do want to do is have more young people engaged with sport, not just an elite. Um, and uh, currently, I'm very proud to be chair of the Black Country School Games, and that's one of the targets that we have, is, is wider participation for young people who are not necessarily involved in elites or club but also to get them to get an opportunity to take part, including swimming, yeah. uh, where swimming may, may be something where they're not so confident about, but do it as an enjoyment activity. Um, can I just add as well, uh, adding on from that about not necessarily the, the taking part in, in the competitive side, something else we do have at the school is the leadership team and the leadership side of things, which is absolutely fantastic. And uh, if anyone's watching out there that has been part of the School Games programme and has come to the Street Academy um, representing your primary school, what you will have saw is our young leaders that, that come and help out the referee or they score events and that sort of stuff. And that's a fantastic system and we have over 100 students every year, mostly Year 7s who are obviously coming dead keen in September. So we will be running that out again from September for students that want to be involved but might not necessarily want to actually be in the, the taking part side of things. So there's a lot of opportunities there as well throughout the year. Okay, um, next two questions. Does, I'll answer the, the, the second one first from Helen. Does the school have a football team? Yes, we have a football team in every year group. Um, uh, I think at one stage we were winning in every age group. Uh, we've not been as successful recently. Our year 10 team have been particularly, have done well. Uh, but uh, um, yes, we do have a school football team. Are there any other trips in year seven? Do you want to pick that one up? It's yeah, um, it's something we were talking about actually. Obviously for the past year uh, or, or two years because of COVID, it, they, the trips have kind of um, been decimated, haven't they, what we would traditionally do. Um, but certainly, if that starts to ease up, it's something that we, we're both quite passionate about, of looking both in a, in a reward sense, but in an enrichment sense as well. Um, I know that the big one, the Paris trip, which goes in April uh, in the Easter uh, half term, <coughs> obviously that's not been able to go ahead. I don't know. Um, I think, fingers crossed, that, that would run again. It is planned for next is year. Is it planned? Yeah. So that's that's a bit that's very popular, isn't it? Uh, a trip to Paris, uh, Disneyland. Um, so that's something to always look forward to. But then throughout the year, we um, your subject teachers and your subject uh, leads will try and do enrichment days, uh, subject kind of uh, tailored. Uh, but we also want to try and uh, promote some uh, rewards as well. Uh, so maybe some trips out. I know the Bear Grylls exhibition is, is something I'm desperate to go on. Uh, my daughters are too young at the moment, so I can't imitate them, but I'm desperate to go do that. Uh, and I know that's been massively popular and is actually really um, beneficial for that kind of team building and, and resilience, which we mentioned earlier. Um, so that'd be a really, really good one. And fingers crossed that we, we get to do that this year. Uh, the plan is throughout the year, it's kind of staggered to have lots of different trips. Um, and that, that might be from, from a pastoral and a year team, but certainly from a subject team, as well, uh, your subject departments as well, all the running trips. Yeah, just before um, COVID kicked in back in March last year, one of the things that we were looking at is what we call the street, the offer. And one of the things that we are really pushing forward as we move forward is, is to give not just careers opportunity for students to get out and, and see um, the world of work, um, not just through work experience, but actually visiting places. Um, but also we really want every student to visit a university campus 
um, and, and our, our intention is for that to be something that every child will do within the school. Um, that, of course, isn't the only aspiration that, that, you know, not every child, the pathway through academics is, 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 is right for them. Of course, you know, there are fantastic apprenticeship opportunities, but we really do want to explore that as we go forward. It's been so difficult to plan in COVID times because we never knew whether anything would run and we kept pushing back and pushing back and, and, we, and we couldn't do the things that we wanted to do. Um, when do we join activity clubs? They kick in pretty much straight away. Um, uh, I sort of keep repeating myself on the sports and activities and performing arts and art club and the drama club and music. Uh, dance runs like three nights a week. Uh, so that, that you know, just to just to reiterate on that, they they that is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, and we will make sure that, that those are running as soon as the students are in, within a couple of weeks, giving us some time to, to settle I down. I think so. Just on that enrichment and trips mm. and things like that as well, I think one of the things that I found when I joined this school is there's two amazing opportunities, well, life-changing opportunities, where there's a ski trip, um, which goes to New York, uh, and then skiing in Boston, I believe. Um, I mean, you, you get a couple of days shopping in New York and then a ski trip to Boston, that just sounds like my, my wife's perfect holiday. Um, and then also, and I think it might have been in, in the real world time if COVID wasn't here. I think today or, or yesterday was actually the, the trip to India um, yeah, that, that was today. going out, um, where students get to go to a part of the world that they might not ever visit, a part of the world that is so culturally different to ours. Uh, and actually work with young people over there and have a life-changing experience working on projects which will stay with them for forever. Uh, that really are life-changing opportunities. And, and all of that kind of links together with the, the, the trips and the visits and the extracurricular. It all comes together to, to offer a, an amazing package in the street, the offer which is which will be mapped out for the seven years that you're here. We, we talk about five years in, in street. They, the vast majority of our students want to stay for the two years of A-levels as well. Um, and that will be mapped out in front of you so you can see the opportunities that are coming up for you. Yeah, that trip, the, the, the India trip, in the last um, sort of five years, that's been Tanzania, uh, Borneo, uh, Costa Rica, uh, and the, the most recent one was due to go to India. And of course, you know, that, that hasn't happened because of COVID. Um, but, uh, but it is a wonderful experience that the students start to prepare for actually when they get to the end of year 10 because it's a two year run in to, to do, go on that trip because they have to raise the funds for it also. Um, but uh, a fantastic experience. Um, next question, will students need to bring a Chromebook with them every, uh, to school every day? Our person who sort of runs that program is actually behind the computer at the moment, Mr. Pyatt. Uh, I'm gonna give you a very quick answer to that. Yes, part of your school equipment list is your Chromebook and it must be charged. Uh, so every day when you come in, you must bring your Chromebook because it's built into so many uh, um, areas of our curriculum. And in fact, there are some areas of the curriculum that, that, that deliver uh, a 100% via Chromebooks, uh, particularly as they get higher up the school. Uh, when will children be issued with Chromebooks if purchased through the school? Uh, anyone know this? Uh, I'm going to look at Mr. Pyatt. First week, but, yeah, I think it takes us a couple of weeks because they need to be set up uh, in the account names of the, the child with their email address um, because it's the email address that gives the identity to the Chromebook and signs them into all of the school systems. So it's like a single sign-in uh, system that we use called RM Unify. Um, we try and get those issues all sorted within the first uh, couple of weeks. Um, but uh, actually physically issuing them out, we bring them all actually into this room they get a bit of guidance on how to get logged on. They get super excited, um, and uh, and then we see them at lunch times, you know, logging in and trying to find out what they can do and changing their desktops and so on. Uh, but uh, that is within the first couple of weeks. Okay, thank you, Claire, for that one. Um, and the next question is coming very quickly, from Mr. Pyatt. I think I threw you there, Mr. Pyatt, by asking you a question. Okay, uh, how will my child be kept safe online at school and at home using their Chromebook? I'm going to hand to our safeguarding lead, Mr. Harris. Yeah, it's, uh, every Thursday, uh, just to, to touch on how we keep you informed on online safety and things, because we can protect students online on their Chromebooks, we can protect students inside of school, but obviously in this technological world that we're in at the moment, it's so easy uh, 24 seven to be online. Um, we do have a system called Smoothwall, 
Now, smooth wall will pick up anything that is typed into the computers that is regarded as a danger. So it could be anything that's sexualized, it could be anything that's violent, it could be anything that's uh, socially, emotionally attached. Um, so that will, that flags up, we get an alert. They're, they're done at different levels, from level three to level five, level five being the most serious. All of those issues, all of those things that are picked up are dealt with by the safeguarding team or the year team, dependent on what the, what the issue might be and what's being typed in. So we monitor those computers 24 seven. So even if it's 1 a.m. in the morning and somebody's working on the computer, um, be it the children or be it parents that have borrowed it um, to work on, you just need to be careful what is being typed in and what it's being used for because it will flag to us. It will be addressed with the students. So please make sure that your children know that it is being monitored. It is being monitored at all times. We do release some of the uh, materials that are flagged up for when pupils go into sixth form, for instance, because they start working on their EPQ topics, which might be about gun crime in America and things like that, which would be blocked and would flag for lower school students. But obviously when they're uh, in the sixth form, that is some of the material that they would need to research for their projects. We give a constant update on online safety every Thursday through a safeguarding and well-being newsletter that will come to you all uh, as soon as you start in September and really use that because it does keep you up to date and we went to a conference not too long ago and they said about online safety and they were talking about online safety and the person who was leading it said who knows online material best in your school and people were thinking it was the IT people etc but it's probably the students themselves it's probably children because you know it, People of varying ages on this panel today, um, some better with IT than others. Um, but the online aspect of things, students know it well. We have a working group of students called our online safety team who we meet with as a safeguarding team and go through all online safety activities. And then that is disseminated through the entirety of the school through our life curriculum program, which happens every morning. So. We, it's a constant feed of information we give about online safety. Um, but please just rest assured that it's covered and it always is monitored. Yeah, we have two newsletters a week actually. So we have one general newsletter that goes out just with information and celebration of things uh, uh, as well as the safeguarding newsletter that goes out every Thursday. Um, the next question I'm looking at, and it's the one I'm most frightened at so far because I have no idea of the answer. Uh, when does swimming start and what are the uniform requirements? And I reckon, oh, fantastic. <laughs> well done, Mr. Sanders, you've saved us. Uh, so if you're talking swimming in the P curriculum, that can start pretty much straight away. Now, obviously, it won't be expected that students take part in the swimming itself in the first week because they won't get their timetables till uh, they join us in September. But it might be one of their first subjects uh, in the curriculum and obviously they'll be told about that and they'll be instructed on what to bring now if it um, if the uniform if that was meant as in what do they wear for swimming there's a, a guidance that will be given out by the peer department and it's swimming hat uh, swimming trunks are normally preferred but shorts and obviously swimming costume uh, for the females um, but and then for extracurricular swimming there are extracurricular swimming clubs as well that happen throughout the year. That probably won't be for the first half term, just as we sort of settle in and get people accustomed to having the right things and what goes on and where. But swimming will be available all the way through their, their school uh, lives from year seven up to six form. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Sanders, for saving us on that one. I was worried that no one would know the answer to that. Um, uh, that's um, that's all the questions that have been sent in to us for this evening. Um, and uh, so I finally just want to thank everybody for, for joining us. Um, we do direct you to the Year 6 Transition Portal on our website. So if you go there, and I think it might actually be on the landing page at the moment. If you, if you go to the school website, you will see there's a little pop-up in the corner that says year six transition portal and it will take you straight there um, our email our sorry our website address is really easy to remember uh, which is streetly.academy um, and that will take you straight to our school website uh, click on year six transition portal and it will take you to so if you do have more questions you may find that your question can already be answered because there is a frequently asked questions section 
Uh, and what we've done is all the questions that we've been asked over the years by year six uh, prospective parents, so joining us in September, we've tried to answer all of those. So, um, so do, do take yourself to the portal. If there's anything there that you feel that we can't answer or isn't on the, on the website, or a particular query um, uh, about your own child or something you want your form tutor to know, um, you will have seen that there is a video and the email addresses of the form tutors are on the portal as well, so you can contact them directly. Um, we want to get as much information as possible, so if there's something you're concerned about or something you feel that they should know, because that's their first port of call, then go to the transition portal and all of their email addresses are on there. I think the video is there, plus the teacher's name, plus their email address, along with Mr. McCourt and Mr. Allen's uh, email addresses also. Um, so once again, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I hope you've found it helpful and useful. For the young people out there, uh, have a fantastic summer. Enjoy your summer holidays. We hope to meet some of you in summer school in the first and last weeks of the holidays. Uh, but most of all, we just can't wait for you to come here and join us. And I really hope we're all together in the hall to start with on the first day. That really is our plan. Uh, please don't be frightened. Uh, don't be anxious. We will look after you when you get here. And, uh, and on that first day, uh, you'll get your photograph taken. I'm absolutely certain it will end up on Facebook for many of you uh, because that's just what people do on your first day at school. I want you to look superbly smart and I would love it if you stay that smart all the way through until you're in year 11. Uh, that's all from us. I just want to thank Mr. Sanders, Mr. Harris. Oh, we've had, a, we've, had a, we've had a question come up just at the end there, just as I'm finishing off. I was in such a flow there. It was like the end of question time. Um, do we need to buy protective clothing like lab coat and apron for practical lessons? You don't need a lab coat for uh, science, um, and I think you may need an apron. I think that is in the DT. uniform risk for DT, DT and for, yeah, for, uh, for food. So that is something. Uh, will the pre-recorded vi video be available to watch as we missed it? Uh, yes, there will be a recording of this evening that will go onto YouTube. The full version of this evening, right from beginning to end, including the videos at the start, uh, will be available to watch back on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, so I'll, I'll finish there. I won't go over it again. We can't wait to see you in September. And uh, please don't worry. We will look after you. And uh, this is the start of a, of a fantastic five or seven, or preferably seven years of your time here at Streetly. Uh, thank you again for joining us and uh, have a wonderful summer. And we'll see you on September the 6th. Thank you.